All right, boys, welcome back to JJDL semifinals. If you missed it, there was no video last week because both semifinals had a semifinalist or a coach that was in LA. We were in LA for a vacation, me and Javier both. So we extended a week. So this week, we're playing semifinals against Star. Let me tell you, boys, I am so excited for this. Star is one of my best friends in the world. I could go on for it for a very long time, but I'll keep it pretty short. We've not played too many serious games against each other, so it's always a treat to get to actually play him, especially on Wi-Fi. And I'm really pumped that it's in this playoff setting where the winner makes finals, and deservedly so, in my opinion. He has had an amazing season going 7-1 really used his team very well and proved to me that Dragapult, maybe I just wasn't the right person to use it. Maybe he was that guy. However, I do think I'm the right guy to use Raging Bolt and Iron Hands. And I'm here to show him that those guys, alongside Big Boulder's shoulder, is here to stop him. Shout out to everybody who's made this JJDL season possible. All of the coaches have been fantastic. And if this is the last JJDL video, I just want you guys to know that you are very much appreciated. We had zero drops in Xi'an Pao this season, and it was a fantastic season. But let's reel it back in here and let's talk about this matchup. I went pretty in-depth for this build. Shout out to Obo for the handful of mocks that he did give me. Even though he's out, still help me out. Star's team is going to be Dragapult, King Gambit, Swampert, Screamtail, Moltres, Terra to Dunsparce, Kelio, Terra Tornadus, and Venomoth. And I have some pretty strong opinions about the Pokemon that he will and will not bring. I'm going to go ahead and take some time to break this down because I did go pretty in-depth as to what I do think Star is going to bring uh, down to the sets, down to the moves. I do think that I have a pretty good grasp on what he could bring, but it's Star, so there's going to be a lot of mind games here. He knows how I build. I know how he builds, so it's going to be a fun mental matchup here to see who brings what, and I think it's a pretty 50-50 matchup. I really do. Th looking at the matchup on paper, I think it's just about as close to a 50-50 matchup as you can get, but there is one Pokemon that's going to come here no matter what, always. It's going to be Dragon. Dragapult. Dragapult's a fantastic Pokemon, obviously. In this matchup, it does very well. Our fairy type is Wigglytuff, which we did draft for specifically for things like Dragapult. However, <laughs> we're probably not going to bring Wigglytuff. I'm going to be honest with you guys. We do have some semi answers, like Ursaluna with an AV can take some hits. Iron Hands kind of can, but he doesn't want to get Will O Wisp burn. Uh, Raging Bolt obviously is probably going to be one of Terra Fairy or Steel in this matchup if we do decide to use it defensively or even Terra Normal, all types that are considered. And Dragapult does not like dealing with any of those. So there is counterplay on our team to Dragapult, but Star is very capable of getting our team into a position to where this Pokemon can win in the end game. I do also think he will guarantee be boots based on how he has been playing this season. It makes the most sense. Spec does well, Ban does well but Boots does best. So I think that's what he's going to be. As for his moveset, I think he's going to be U-Turn, Will-O-Wisp, Hex, and Draco. I do think that he could trade out U-Turn for Dragon Dance and Draco for Dragon Darts, though. That set makes the most sense to me. There's not a ton of counterplay on my team. He's able to take advantage of pretty much all of my Pokemon, except for the Wigglytuff if I do bring it, but I think that he's willing to bet that I'm not going to bring that Pokemon. Like I said, some other good sets could be Specs or Ban, but he has shown a very big tendency to not enjoy choice items on his Dragapult. He has shown a big tendency to enjoy Boots, so I do think into the Skarmory, into the potential Hazard stack that we have, Boots Dragapult makes a ton of sins, and in Mox, it was one of the most problematic Pokemon, even with me prepping for that very specific set. Past Dragapult, there are three other Pokemon that I think, no matter the build, no matter what star things I am going to bring, will come, and the next Pokemon on that list is going to be the Dunsparce. Terra the Dunsparce does fantastic in this matchup, and there are three key types that I think he could possibly be. I think Ground makes the most sense, but it does make him weak to Grassy Glide from Rillaboom, but it gives him a lot of options, right? Like it helps versus Raging Bolt, uh, and Iron Hands, it lets him hit those super effectively, and even Iron Boulder, specifically Iron Boulder actually, is why he would primarily be that, and also to boost the Ground Stab against those aforementioned Pokemon. He could be Steel. It gives him a similar type of vibe, but it does make him weak to Iron Hands, but it does make him resist Grassy Glide. So there's positive and negatives to both of those. It just depends on what he prefers. And then Fairy, you can never go wrong with Fairy, especially in the My Team. Fairy is a pretty free typing. Uh, it can be our Skarmory. If he is Fairy, I do 100% know immediately that he is going to be special because that's the only way that he could beat Skarmory. In my mind though, ground makes the most sense, and then maybe steel, and then past that, not a lot that he could definitely be. Fairy's definitely an option, but as far as the set, 
I don't know, man. I think both Coil and Calm Mind do fantastic. I think he could be Coil Amnesia. It does very well, but I do have Frostlast, so it depends on if he respects that to be Roost Body Slam or whatever the case may be. It does give us a hard time pretty much no matter how you look at it. It's also very difficult for us to ever push past it. It, <laughs> it can get into so many great positions. We really have to call that Terra type correctly with it being ground and abuse it while it is not yet Terra ground. The next Mon that I think guaranteed comes is going to be Keldeo. We don't really have great switch-ins to this Pokemon. The combination of Secret Sword plus Hydro Pump puts us in a really tough spot. It can break through AV Iron Hands, AV Raging Bolt. So with Death Raging Bolt because of Secret Sword, how strong that Pokemon is. Uh, obviously, I do think Choice Specs makes the most sense. Choice Scarf, I don't really see coming because i don't really think it helps you with anything but if you anticipate maybe a scarf raging bolt i guess that could come but specs is primarily what i'm thinking but if he is in his own head and he does worry about the thunderclap mind games he could be sub calm mind regardless he is going to be hydro pump or surf and secret sword at least and then the last pokemon that i think pretty much comes no matter what is going to be Screamtail. I think Wish Encore and then two other moves do very well. He could be a Thunder Wave, Dual Stab, Protect, although Protect obviously Mighty Cleave goes through Protect, so I don't know how he feels about that. And Star has shown a tendency to run max speed Screamtail to outspeed certain threats. In this case, it would be Frostlass. I don't necessarily think that he's going to do that in this matchup because Screamtail is his only real viable answer to Ursula Blood Moon. And if I am an offensive Ursula to Blood Moon with something like Calm Mind, uh, he can obviously encore me into that. But if I click Blood Moon into him and he's got no Spadef, there is a chance to two-hit KO. And Encore will let me use Blood Moon twice. That's a lot of information to throw at you. But basically, I don't think he will be enough speed to outspeed Frostlass. I don't think he will respect Frostlass. I think he will go down and he will speed creep the Rillaboom and be a little bit more Spadef. Which passes are also nice to pass into the next Pokemon that I think he's going to bring, which is going to be Swampert. I think Swampert makes a lot of sense. I think it does very good. It blocks Bolt Switches from Raging Bolt prior to the Dunsparce Terra Grounding, which is huge. Very, very important. I also think it's a very good lead into my team. There's not very much that it doesn't want to lead into. And I think it's going to be Fizz Death because it gives him a very good check to the Iron Boulder. The only downside of that is it doesn't have recovery. And if he's not Leftovers and he is not going to be... And if he's not leftovers, then he doesn't get that recovery minus grassy terrain. So obviously, Boulder's going to chip him down over time. So I do think he's going to do that. And I think he's going to be Fizz Def. If not lefties, then Boots could also be Rindo Berry, but doesn't make a ton of sense. The only situation he would be Rindo Berry is if he is hard reading my Power Herb Iron Boulder, which is definitely a possibility that I looked into and may or may not be bringing. But if he hard reads that and he really does think that I am going to bring that, he could be Rindo. But I do think Pult, Screamtail, and Pert so far are going to be boots and maybe even to dump Star Stars brought five boots several times this season. And the last Mon is not going to change that. I think he's going to bring Moltres. I think if he doesn't bring Moltres, Rillaboom goes crazy. So I think he does need that, especially if his game plan hinges on the likes of Keldeo. He's going to need that switch into Rillaboom. So I think he's going to bring Moltres specifically for that because it does a fantastic job because for some reason Rillaboom does not get rock coverage. As far as the Pokemon I did not name, the least likely to come is going to be Tornadus, just because base Tornadus does very poor on my team. I do not ever see base Tornadus coming, and Tornadus with Terra Ground does fantastic into me. But the problem is that the Dunsparce with Terra Ground just does better. So if you Terra your Tornadus, you lose the opportunity cost of the Dunsparce. And if you bring Tornadus, you bring a Pokemon that doesn't do great into the matchup, and you'd rather have a different slot. So I think he's going to go hard into that Dunsparce and not going to bring Terra Tornadus. I think is the least likely to come solely because of what I said. The next least likely to come, it could come, but I really doubt it, is going to be Venomoth. Venomoth could be interesting if he wants to use it as an answer for Rillaboom instead of Moltres, but generally speaking, I think Moltres is a little better. But Venomoth can get into some nice positions to quiver up and whatnot. But the Flame Body from Moltres, I think, is a little bit more valuable. And then lastly, the Wild Card, King Gambit. Could King Gambit come? King, King Camp? King, could King Gambit come? It's definitely possible. But I have some really good answers to it. Specifically, Iron Hands absolutely destroys it. Skarmory does not care about it at all. Something like Raging Bull can take advantage of it. Volt Switch for free. We have a lot of good ways to deal with that Pokemon. So I do not really think it could come. But I didn't count it out because it does have access to Sucker Punch. Which obviously puts our Boulder in a bad spot if we are going to be Booster Energy. So to recap, the six that I do think Star is going to bring is going to be Dragapult, Terra, specifically Ground to Dunsparce, but it could also be Steel Fairy, the likes of that, Smeldeo, Screamtail, Swampert, and Moltres, with the possibility of King Gambit and Venomoth being very real. As for the team that we're bringing, one last note about Star's team that I did want to talk about, his team is almost entirely 
especially offensive, except for the capability of Dragapult. Swampert does hit kind of hard. People underrate that Pokemon for sure. And also the Dunsparce being physical. The only way he hits on the physical side, otherwise super strong is going to be Keldeo's Secret Sword. So keep that in mind as we go through this team builder. AVs are going to be our best friend. Our first Pokemon, it's very telegraphed. It's helped us so much through the season. Guaranteed one check to anything pretty much. It's going to be Raging Bull. If this is our last game with Raging Bolt, it's been one of my favorite Pokemon to use ever. Terra Raging Bolt has been so fun to build with, to play with. It's been fantastic. This week, we are going to be rocking Terra Fairy, which I think is very telegraphed. I think it's super obvious that I'm going to be Terra Fairy. But I did also think about both, not both, all three of Steel, Water, and Normal. Those were three types that did live in my head that I really, really thought about. Water for Keldeo, Steel, because it helps with, you know, King Gambit doesn't make me weak to that Pokemon, but Fairy helps me with Sucker Punch, so that's why I went Fairy. And then Normal, because it forces the Dragapult to click Draco, which it would anyway, but it allows him to not be able to lock into Shadow Ball, which I thought was very valuable. However, I decided Fairy was the best overall type, especially because Fairy is pretty free in the Stars team, where his Steel type is going to be King Gambit. The only other Pokemon that he has that resists that is going to be the Venomoth and the potential Terra Steel onto Dunsparce. We're going to be Assault Vest. Assault Vest helps with a special variant of Dragapult. If he specs, great, we check it. If not, great, we super check it. Willow Hex can get pretty annoying, so we do have to limit our switches with this Pokemon. And we would like to get into Terra Air as soon as possible, because we can take Specs Hydros from Keldeo a whole lot better than Specs Secret Swords. We do have to just be a little wary, because it's Electric Dragon is still a pretty good defensive typing in this matchup, but we it's its weird. It's weird to position it. We would like to tear early. We'd also like to keep our typing. It kind of just depends on the situation. Or Thunderclap, specifically because Specs Keldeo does so well into us, it puts them in a bad spot late in the game. Volt Switch. Once Swampert is gone, or if the Dunsparce is not yet tarot into ground, we can get a lot of momentum and get into very advantageous positions. I really did think about Thunderbolt in this spot, but I thought we did enough damage with Terra Blast and with the other move that we're about to talk about. Or with the move we already talked about, Thunderclap, sorry. Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail is going to be a very free click as the Swampert comes in. Swampert should be the check to this pretty much every time. And we can also abuse that. Once we do get our Terra off, we can Terra Blast into that Pokemon, get some chip on it, and put it in range of some later Pokemon that we will talk about. Not only that, but I really like Dragon Tail to prevent setup on the Dunsparce, which I don't think will be Terra Fairy, but if he is, he got me. He got me, man. There's just nothing you can do about it. Also helps with the potential Dragon Dancing uh, Dragapult. If we're not in the position to Oko it, if he is Habam, whatever the case may be, catches us off guard. We can Dragon Tail him, and he can get out of there. And then Terra Blast, Terra Blast Fairy is very free in the star like I was talking about. There were a lot of sets that I thought about, but ultimately with this team composition, I felt the most comfortable with Raging Bolt being our Dragapult answer. I did really consider Calm Mind though. I think Calm Mind offensive Raging Bolt destroyed Star, but I, I'm a little bit more comfortable with this. Our EVs were very spadaff with a lot of special attack investment. It allows us to take three Specs Modest Shadow Balls from the Dragapult, so we can shoot those up all day if he is not Specs, or two Specs Keldeo Hydros once we are Terra'd after Rocks. We also have some defensive investment just to cover if he is a physical Dragapult, since again, this is our Dragapult check. We can take two Adamant Phantom Forces from Dragapult after Rocks. We went 12 speed for creeps. I don't really think he's going to creep me with Swampert, because I think Swampert's going to need to be pretty much max Fizz Death to take those Iron Boulder hits. But just in case he does for whatever reason, we went 12. It's very easy to predict this speed creep, so I'm a little worried that this is going to be not only for nothing, but the Swampert may potentially outspeed us. But just in case, we have a little bit of speed. Like I said, Pulp, his primary purpose is that Dragapult, but he also helps a lot with Keldeo, a lot with Moltres, a lot of different Pokemon. Even Tornadus, if it comes, it kind of completely invalidates that Pokemon, um, depending on his Terra type. The Dunsparce is going to be a little, little, bit, a little bit tough to mess with, but Raging Bolt's primary purpose is not here to do damage. It's here to soak up a hit from the Dragapult, Volt switch out, do damage to the Swampert, get it in range of some later Pokemon. Speaking of later Pokemon, it's actually to get it in range of this Pokemon, Big Boulder Shoulder. This Pokemon has carried us this season, and ironically, Star is the one, one of the two people that recommended this Pokemon to me, the other of which being Oboe. 
This Pokemon's great in this matchup. He doesn't have great answers to it. It's going to be King Gambit, it's going to be Swampert, and it's going to be Keldeo as far as Rock resists. And obviously, King Gambit doesn't like close combat, and Keldeo does not like our other stabs. So really, it is just Swampert, and he is very uncomfortable switching into this Pokemon otherwise. But like I said earlier, I do not think there is any reason for him to go max speed Timid Screamtail unless he is completely calling my bluff, and he wants to outspeed an Adamant Iron Boulder. Completely possible. If that's the case, good prep on Star's part. Like I said, big mental game between two friends. We're going to be banded and we're going to be max attack adamant. It just so happened that max speed, max attack adamant was just enough speed to outspeed the Keldeo. We're not creeping that scream tail. We are not guaranteed creeping that scream tail by any means. I said it twice. Don't know why. I wanted to go adamant because the damage on the Swamper is irreversible, right? Like it is only through grassy terrain and potentially leftovers, which again, I really do not think the star is going to be. If he is max biz def Swamper, Mighty Cleave's doing 25%. So he's got three switch ins or four switch three switch ins before he's able to not take another one you see what i'm saying or close combat does 40 percent if we want to go ahead and raw call that if he's also got king gambit it's gonna be a lot easier for us to do but past that mighty cleave is free and getting a boulder into positions where he can click buttons on things like the scream tail on things like the moltres on things like tornadoes if it's brought is going to be very crucial very early on especially if the dunsparce is terra ground we do like 70 percent of that pokemon with mighty cleave like this is just crazy damage and if he's a special to dunsparce he can't oko us very important so boulder is crucial in this game just to be a breaker he's going to be doing what he's been doing all season getting in good positions potentially cleaning up late game he's going to be able to revenge kill the Keldeo. We do have to watch out for that Dragapult because we opted for Ban, not Scarf, not Booster. We actually do get outsped by Dragapult and we do get not O-Code if he's not Specs, but we do take a hefty chunk and we do risk the Will-O-Wisp. We also have Secret Sword. I know I uh, explained the other three moves. We have Secret Sword because if he is Terra Skill to Dunsparce and he does start coiling, I don't have a whole lot for it. So I want a Secret Sword to be able to still do massive damage, put it potentially in range of Raging Bolt of another Pokemon that we'll talk about in a little bit. Pretty cut and dry boulder explanation. Our next Pokemon is going to be Big Uncle Mike. And this set went through so many revisions. We had AV at one point. We had Lumberry. But ultimately, booster energy to do the most damage possible is what I decided on. This Pokemon specifically, we are Swords Dance, three attacks. And we are Swords Dance primarily because if he is Coil to Dunsparce, we never push past it. We did not have any big setup threats to really push past that because we were not Calm Mind on our Raging Bolt. So I decided that we needed that. So I took off the AV that I thought was so good on the Iron Hands in this matchup and decided, hey, let's throw on a booster. Let's put him in a bad spot. We can switch this hard in on the Scream Tail that does like 30% to us. And we can throw off a big heavy slam with a booster attack and do 70%. We can get a Swords Dance off on a King Gambit. We can uh, KO the Swamper in return if he is slower swamper because we are running a lot of speed this pokemon puts him in such bad positions and even if we do waste the booster it's not the biggest deal in the world this pokemon has a lot of use outside of just the booster the booster is just to get an advantageous switch and put him in a bad spot we have drain punch thunder punch and heavy slam dual stabs are kind of necessary drain punch obviously for recovery hits everything super hard and then thunder punch for keldeo as well as moltres we have Heavy Slam because otherwise we weren't doing the damage that I wanted to Screamtail. And it's also an easy click to also do great damage to the pull. I had Ice Punch. I thought Ice Punch was good. But Heavy Slam did like 4 or 5% less than Ice Punch to the pull. So I thought it was worth it. Maybe catch an odd switch in, in the pull and do like 60%. Could be very nice. We're actually a pretty fast Iron Hands here. We can outspeed the 12-speed Swampert. Honestly, maybe I would put a little bit more speed in this. I don't know. I might try to outspeed a 24-speed Swampert because that seems kind of likely to speed creep this. Um, but right now, we are pretty fast. We can outspeed the Dunsparce and Swampert most of the time, depending on how he wants to do those EVs. We can live two Specs Modest Shadow Balls from the Dragapult. And we can live two Dunsparce Earthquakes outside of Grassy Terrain at plus one. Uncle Mike is a big damage doer in this matchup. He does so much damage, and he's also our default King Gambit switch in should that Pokemon come. Puts us in a really good spot. King Gambit, I don't know, he might get rocks. It does get Zen Headbutt, but it's not doing a ton of damage to us at all. We can get that booster off. We can do some good damage. Next up, Skarm VP, the defensive Pokemon of the season. Well, second place to obviously the Dunsparce, but Skarmory is very good here. <laughs> We're going to be Rocky Helmet just to cover both the Swampert having Flip Turn as well as the King Gambit if it is brought. And ironically enough, we didn't bring Body Press for the King Gambit because I'm that 
confident that we can deal with it otherwise. I have Roost and I have Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is crucial because we have some Pokemon that can potentially knock off Moltres' boots, put that in a bad spot, and also it gives us some good chip, some good information as to whether or not he is boots. Because like I said, he loves to run boots on everything. So finding that information out, if Keldeo's boots and not specs, that's such good information. We can pivot accordingly and we can make a lot more aggressive pivots on that Pokemon knowing it is boots. We have Whirlwind that's to prevent setup on the Dunsparce, on the Keldeo, on the Dragapult, like you name it, it's here to prevent setup on it. And then we went Brave Bird because it lets us hit the Moltres as well as the Dragapult as well as the Keldeo. Iron Head did good, it let us do a lot more damage to the Screamtail. Body Press did very good, it let us do damage to the King Gambit. And Iron Head didn't let us hit the Moltres for any damage should it come to it. So I felt the most comfortable with Brave Bird given the situation. If we lose to King Gambit because our Skarmory can't hit it, uh, then I, it is what it is, I guess. We can leave two King Gambit Adamant Black Glasses Kow Kowtow Cleaves. I don't know if I've ever said that move out loud before. Kowtow? Kowtow? We have a little bit of speed for anything that might be creeping us if Swampert wants to get a little bit crazy. We can have a Specs Keldeo Hydro Pump, two Specs Keldeo Secret Swords, and then we put the remaining eight into attack. This Pokemon is here. Like I said, get rocks up, be annoying. It's the initial, and it gets Rocky Helmet damage on things like the King Gambit, Swampert, and even the Keldeo if it wants to flip turn. It also is able to take two Specs Keldeo Secret Swords, one of the only Pokemon, if not the only Pokemon on our entire team to be able to do that. So it's crucial in that sense as well and can threaten to KO in return or just boost the damage back off. Next up, we're going to be Ursaluna Blood Moon. And I had, I really liked Calm Mind Ursaluna Blood Moon in this matchup. I really did. But if we brought that, we had nothing on our team for Moltres. Ironically enough, if he was an offensive Moltres, we got absolutely smoked. We went AV to prevent that, and we're Vacuum Wave because it allows us to hit King Gambit. It cancels out the Sucker Punch, obviously. It gets extra damage on Dragapult because of Mind's Eye. Helps us with the Keldeo if need be. You know, pretty much everything is faster than us, so it helps with pretty much everything. Blood Moon needs no, no, needs no introduction. Hyper Voice is good because it can pick off KOs after the Blood Moon, uh, and it's more unresisted than Earth Power, I believe at least, right? Everything except King Gambit. Yeah, and I guess Earth Power, I guess it was the same thing. Or no, there's two flying types. Ignore me. And then Gunk Shot, because Earth Power was not really needed outside of King Gambit. We have Vacuum Wave for King Gambit. And Gunk, getting a Gunk Poison on the Screamtail as it wishes, can actually be very helpful and helps us push past it with Blood Moon, which it might be the check to. So I found that Earth Power was never clicked once in any of the mocks. Granted, I did two mocks. But Gunk Shot and the potential to get that poison on Screamtail is a lot more important than the Earth Power. We're also AV, it helps us with, you know, take a hit from Keldeo? It helps to take a hit from the pole, if need be. And his team's just pretty much entirely special, and primarily that's his chew from the Moltres. We have enough speed to outspeed 32 speed Swamper, so if he's getting jiggy with it, if he's a super fast Swamper, we can outspeed that Pokemon. We leave two modest specs Pult Dracos and the rest in the special attack Modest. This Mon still does damage. If he doesn't bring Screamtail for whatever reason, he has basically no counterplay to this Pokemon at all. And then lastly, I bounce back and forth between Blastoise and this Pokemon. And Blastoise sucks, by the way. It doesn't do any damage. I'm very underwhelmed with Blastoise this season. It, I was going to run Dragon Pulse Blastoise to cover uh, both Dragapult and then Keldeo. It did 20% to a no HP Keldeo. It didn't break sub on Keldeo. When I was afraid of Calm Mind, to, it, the whole thing, Blastoise, I don't know if I'm a draft to begin. I'll be honest. It's very weak. Anyway... The Pokemon that we decided on is Rillaboom with protective pads. I don't really think there's another item we can bring in this matchup to not protect ourselves against that flame body on Moltres. Uh, U-turn's pretty self-explanatory, Glide's self-explanatory, Woodhammer is as well, and Knockoff is fantastic into a team like this because not only can we knock off the boots the first time the Moltres comes in, but it, we can knock off like leftovers onto Dunsparce, or we can knock off uh, an incoming King Gambit uh, Black Glasses or something. Like it, Knockoff is very, very good into Star's team, and, and he doesn't really have a great way to counter that. We can outspeed a 24 speed Moltres. Will that come into play? Probably not, but it's better safe than sorry, right? We have two Specs Keldeo Hydros, two non Specs Keldeo Secret Swords, and the rest into attack. I like Rillaboom in this slot too, because it helps with Terra Grounded on Sparse, which I was so worried about. And Blastoise wasn't really doing enough damage to do that. I had Roar. I like Blastoise sucks, man. <laughs> but it also gives me Glide into the Dragapult and into specifically. The Keldeo, which is a Pokemon that I'm very worried about. We went very anti-Keldeo with this team, but I still do think it's going to get at least two on me. If he's Specs. Specs Keldeo is so good here. 
And it also helps, you know, worst case scenario, he brings Terra Ground Tornadoes, helps with that as well, gives us a little bit of uh, alleviated pressure as far as that goes. And that's going to be the team, guys. Super long team builder. Shout out to Sunny for editing this video. Team is pretty straightforward. There's no necessarily win con. It's kind of just outlasting star. Uh, we do want to get into positions with both Boulder as well as Iron Hands to be able to offensively pressure him. And our defensive pieces do a great job of pressuring him offensively. Minus Skarmory, who can get rocks up. We can knock off. We can see what's boots, what's not. It's a big game about gathering information, especially in the star. I know how he likes to build. He's going to build probably a balanced team. Like I said, six boots, five boots. So it's going to be a big information game, finding out what's what. And th there's a very good chance that we do lose this game. I want you guys to be prepared. I've talked a lot of mess to star. I let him know that there's no way we lose, but there is a chance that we lose, right? He has a good team. I think it's a 50 50 matchup. We got to play well. We got to show up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. Signing off.